are seven realistic ways to cut the cost of living alone. Stock up on your essentials when you see them on sale. It has gotten really crazy in grocery world, right? People are saying that when you just get a full cart of groceries, it's like a luxury these days. So in a time when groceries are so expensive and we really have got to be very intentional for our spending, intentional when buying food, really mindful when we're adding things to that grocery cart so that we don't go over budget, right? There's a couple ways you can do this. I personally do grocery pickup like 99% of the time now. So when I'm making my order online, you can see when things are on sale. If you have toilet paper on sale, get it. If you see coffee and you make your coffee at home, get it. Uh, one of my favorite things is getting fruit on sale. And usually for me, like for example, I get three different types of berries, either blueberries, strawberries, or raspberries. I just go for the ones that are on sale that week. And that is my berry of the week, basically. Like strawberries right now are two for $5, boom, in the cart. If you don't get your groceries via pickup, you can just look at your flyer online and see what is on sale. I mean, I don't even see buy one, get one free these days. Does anybody see BOGOs anymore? Buy one, get one free? Drop me in the comments if your grocery store still does buy one, get one free. I remember back in the day, there was buy one, get two free, like for English muffins. I never see that anymore. Let me know if you're on patrol and if you have those kinds of deals in your area. They're not in my area anymore, very sadly. Make simple meals. When did people stop making simple meals? Look, especially if you're living on your own, you can eat whatever you want, whenever you want. There's nobody asking for food. There's nobody criticizing. If you overcooked or undercooked something, you have the luxury of choice and not being disturbed. It's become so normal now for people to make their food and then take photos of it. Kind of like, hey everybody, look at this meal. Now listen, there are times I've done it. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I've done it and I'm not even criticizing that. But not every meal has to be picture perfect. If you are living alone and you are on a budget, you don't have to make things so elaborate. You can just have a simple meal. Eggs and toast. You can make a sandwich for lunch, and I mean like a basic sandwich. Tuna fish, if you like tuna fish. A grilled cheese. Simple, easy, delicious. Dinner. A big old pot of spaghetti with some sauce that you love. When did everything have to get so complicated? Keep it simple. Make simple, cost-effective meals that are still delicious. Enjoy. Pancakes, a quesadilla. Okay, I digress. Especially if you're trying to pay off debt. In fact, I did an entire video called 15, I'm gonna put it right here, that's why I'm pointing up, <laughs> or here, wherever it goes, 15 frugal, simple meals when paying off debt. Basic food ideas when trying to save money. Check that out if you're looking for simple ideas. Make the most of your leftovers. I hear people often say, I hate leftovers. I'm not gonna eat leftovers. Look, leftovers is just another word for food. <laughs> it's like, I think it's so funny when people value leftovers less than the initial meal. It's the same meal. You just didn't eat it the first time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think that's so funny that people have like a stigma. Not all of you. A lot of us in the frugal living community love leftovers. We value the leftovers. We get it, right? But don't turn your nose to the leftovers. In fact, declare leftovers night so you can use everything up that you didn't eat the first time. From repurposing your proteins for a fresh new meal to putting it on a pizza, come to think of it, I've got another video for you right here called 15 ways to stretch your leftovers to save money. Guys, I've been doing this for five years. I think about it all and I love to share it with you. 
So check it out. Another realistic way to cut the cost of living alone is to be ruthless with what you say yes to. Now I've got a couple things that I'm talking about when I give you this tip. Okay, be ruthless when I say yes to what? Be ruthless when you make plans. If you're trying to save money and cut the cost of living alone, you can't accept every single invitation probably that you get to go out, to do things. You've gotta be ruthless. You've gotta know what your goals are and you've gotta say no to some things that are not gonna serve you when you're trying to save money, right? We've just gotta be realistic. I know we keep using that word in this video. So when you get invited to things, you've gotta think, okay, what's this gonna cost? Am I really that interested? When you're trying to save money, I would narrow down just doing the things that really spark a yes, I love this, I wanna do this, and really cut back on the things that you're like, man, nah. like don't waste your money, don't waste your time, don't waste your energy on these things, give a polite pass. It's important to reduce your commitments in order to really get what you really want. And that's a savings goal that only you can really answer what you've got going on. Like if you want to save to pay off your house, if you want to save for that vacation, if you want to pay off that debt finally, stop messing around. Get ruthless with what you say yes to. Get ruthless on what you're bringing into your home. Don't bring things into your home on a whim that you don't have a place for, that you're gonna feel buyer's remorse for. Be ruthless with what you say yes to and get what you really want. Build your budget buffer. What is a budget buffer? A budget buffer is one month of your expenses sitting in your checking account at all times. It is a catch-all for when things get messed up for whatever reason. This is going to prevent you from throwing your budget out the window when you make a mistake or something unexpected happens because something unexpected is going to happen. It just is, right? And sometimes when you are a new budgeter or even a seasoned budgeter, sometimes when you are not planning for something and then suddenly you didn't budget for it, you can freak out, you know? So this is to prevent the freaking out, to keep you calm. Your tire blows, darn, this is not fun, but I can pull from my budget buffer. If something you missed in your budget, there's something like, oh gosh, I should have thought of that. Don't worry, budget buffer to the rescue. So having the budget buffer will end up saving you money in the end because there's some people that, I mean, this can be obviously very individual, but if they get thrown off their budget, they just throw it all away. Kind of like when you're on a diet and you have a piece of cake and then you're like, oh, well, I ate a piece of cake, so it's over. It's not over. You had a piece of cake. You go over budget, it's not over. You went over budget once. But if you have that budget buffer, it's gonna prevent a lot of emotional stress and financial drama, if you will. Have that budget buffer one month of expenses by doing the things that we're talking about, being ruthless with your yes, stocking up when you see sale items, making simple meals, using your leftovers. You can slowly build your budget buffer as your beautiful safety net that you can have at all times. What, you want some more information on the budget buffer? I'll leave a video link in the description. Try a no extras week. This is not dramatic in any way, but it can give you a little sampling of what it's like to have a no spend period of time. No spends are when you don't spend anything beyond your regular bills, right? Our channel is notorious for our no spend January. Every year we kick off the year with a no spend month. Not all, but many of us choose to do that here on the channel. And it's a reminder at the start of the year to not be going crazy overspending on things we don't need. It makes us mindful. 
It makes us intentional and it really helps us save money, right? So we don't want to have a no spend every single month. I mean, some people do, they have no spend years, but not me. But if you're really trying to get it under control, just try a no extras week. Just pay your bills, buy your groceries, do your normal thing, but just don't buy anything extra. You don't need shoes this week. You don't need an extra piece of clothing. You don't need to do takeout. Keep it simple, no extras, one week, see how it feels. You might just find that you could do it for another week. Put that money in your savings or put it toward your debt or do whatever you want with it. Here's a fun one, plan for guilt-free spending. Like we were kind of talking about earlier, sometimes if we feel boxed in, we wanna spend, we wanna revenge spend, we wanna revolt against having a budget, we wanna revolt against the system or something. We just, for some reason, we wanna revenge spend. We're gonna just go crazy because you know what? I deserve it. Does this sound familiar? I don't know. I, I just know that I have heard this before. Not from all of you, but some of you get tired of this. We wanna spend. Frugal living. A lot of people are always saying, how can I make frugal living fun? Hopefully you guys know this is what my whole channel is basically about. But when you plan for it, you expect that fun. That fun with no guilt, that's gonna make us happy, right? So every single month, plan for guilt-free spending. At first, this might not be a lot. Maybe at the beginning, it's $25. But guess what? You can spend that 25 on whatever you want. Eventually, maybe you'll get to 50. Maybe you get to 100. But take a certain amount of money every single month, even if it's tiny at first, and label it guilt-free spending and spend it on whatever you want and be unapologetic. This helps loosen the reins and it helps kind of bring into the picture that idea that, Nothing has to be so restrictive and tight and bleh. Sometimes I go off the rails as I'm trying to explain things, but let me dial, let me dial it back. Plan for some guilt-free spending and enjoy that hard-earned money however you choose. You've probably noticed that all of these tips are directed at people that live alone, but they do not apply only to people that live alone. Anybody watching these videos, you can use these tips to cut the cost of your living situation, no matter what your living situation is. But I wanted to just let the people know that do live alone, that are really depending on themselves. They are depending on their income only, their paycheck only, that you can do this. I'm here to cheer you on. And this channel is filled with endless tips, ideas, motivation, inspiration for you. So if you ever have a topic where you're like, oh, well, I need to know more about this budget buffer. Kate Caden budget buffer in the search bar, boom. Kate Caden frugal living tips, boom. Kate Caden ways to save money, boom. I have so many videos to help you in this journey. So don't feel, even if you live alone, that you are alone, cause you're not. Now is your turn, K-Squad. Take a second, leave the squad a comment on a way that you cut the cost of living. No matter how you're living, we want to read through the comments so we have even more ideas. Thank you in advance for doing that. Oh, and if you don't mind, hit that like button if you like this video, share it with a friend. If you know someone that's trying to save money, cut the cost of living alone, help a friend out. Here's a bonus thought. This is for everyone but especially if you're living alone, you have nobody else to rely on for your income, for your expenses, really consider investing so that while you are working your butt off at your nine to five or whatever your job situation is, your money is making money. I really highly recommend that. Whether you do a Roth IRA, whether you do your 401k or 403b with work. Say investing is kind of freaking you out. You're like, I don't really know how much I wanna dive into this. Another way to dip your toe in the investment pond, if you will, is to open an M1 finance account. 
Um, you can use my referral link down below. You get some money, I get some money. And it's really user friendly and it'll just get you started. No matter how you choose to invest, get started. The best time to invest was 20 years ago. The next best time is today. Don't waste time on that when you finally do use these tips to start making some extra money. I really think you'll be so excited to see the growth over time. And like I've told you before, my biggest financial regret in this entire lifetime of mine is not starting investing sooner so that I'll have something for retirement later. And I just didn't understand the pure power of compound interest until later. So don't wait as long as me. Or if you're older than me and you just heard this, do it today. I love you guys. I'll see you in next week's video. Thanks for being here. Bye. Oops, I was just editing and I forgot to say, if you like this video, I got another one for you to watch next right here. Okay, bye again.